very real monetization opportunity. I, I have to bring this up because I haven't mentioned it. We just launched an RTD, real-time bidding ad exchange for mobile in China to fix this problem specifically uh, because we really see the value there. Other questions? Okay. So I'm going to ask my last question really quick. So, how does all of this affect making money on the app store? Uh, was there, I mean, we, we've talked about the discoverability side, which is one thing, but of the changes that we've seen, does, does that change? Does the free-to-play model change? Does the in-app purchase portion change? Um, and more importantly, does the global app monetization change because of any of this? I mentioned this earlier, but I think the biggest thing for me for free-to-play game monetization was the parental permissions on IAP. So it'll be very interesting to see like how many people are actually going to use that, and our kids are actually going to use that as a way to ask their parents to make a purchase. Yeah, I noticed whenever I install the new, uh, I log into the, I, uh, the store the first time, it popped up and said, you want to set up your family's uh, parental control at this time, yes or no. So they, it is something that they're already prompting. Um, I guess the biggest advice I feel like I can give, uh, I have to give our developers, I can give any developer is, you know, just design a game that you, you know, are passionate about. Don't expect to be the next Clash of Clans or the next Candy Crush. If, you know, you really want to do that. We, I tell my guys just go buy lottery tickets and we can do it. But the idea is just to create a great game that people are going to like and, you know, you hope for that great success that, you know, $120 million title, but there's a lot of money to be made in the, in the middle that we can have access to. I, I think, you know, going back to your comments, you know, how